Change is constant, especially when you look at the real estate market. Now it's the end of the year. We had the self-anointed, smartest guys in the room telling us about how the housing market was going to go down in 2023. Well, it didn't. And now they're telling us more of the same and that it's going to go down in 2024. But the real estate market just took some of the biggest lows one could throw at it. 13-year record low in housing sales, high, highest interest rates we've seen in more than two decades, high inflation environment with slowing economic growth. So what's the data saying about the market ahead? Is it a cautionary tale ahead? Real quick, my name is Jet Chubb, and I'm a retired investment banker turned real estate agent, and I've sold more than 1,000 houses. If you have any questions in regards to real estate, then no, I'm here to help. Now, it's a smaller subset of data, but the most recent, nonetheless, I took the sales from December 1st through December 19th for single-family houses in the state of Massachusetts. This totaled 1,638 closed units. So while the data range is small, it wasn't a small sample size. And yes, this is Massachusetts data, but there's a good chance that if you're in a different state, then your data would be very similar. Now, this data represents some of the last closings as we head into 2024. This is some of our best data to help us form opinions on what the market will look like as we head into the winter and all important spring market. The average list to sale price ratio for these 1,638 houses was 100.06%. To say it another way, for every $100 that a seller was asking, on average, they received $100.06. That's not bad for a market that has taken some of the biggest punches one could throw at it. It is all important to note that this data would be catching just the beginning part of that big rate declines. In other words, the January and February closing data would encompass the market where we've seen a burst of activity due to the historic rate drops. But this isn't where the data is all that interesting. Quite frankly, it gets better. 63.49% of the 1,638 houses sold were at the seller's asking price or more, and 52.2% of all houses sold were at above the seller's asking price. Did you catch that? In a market where we were just starting to get a very small amount of rate relief from the over two decade high interest rates, more than half of all the homes that went under agreement and then sold were over asking price. When you look at the 63.49% over 1,040 single family houses that sold at over asking price, then the average list to sale price ratio was 104.27%. Okay, okay. But here is what has really shocked me about the data. It was in the lower pricing segment where the market kicks, well, you know what? When you combine zip codes, Lynn, a town with an average sale price of $560,000 year to date, and the most houses sold with 21 sales. Brockton ranked number two on the list with 19 sales with an average sale price year to date of $482,000. Then Leo Minister with 15 sales, with Thune with 12 sales, and rounding out the top five with 11 sales is Beverly, Massachusetts. Now, Beverly, Mass would be the only town out of that top five list that would be considered a higher-end town. What I gather is that this data really shows that first-time homebuyers are out in force. They're buying now, and they're going to continue to buy in 2024. There is a cautionary tale to be told, all right. The caution is for the homebuyers who have now sat out for two or more years convinced that the market was going to tank. With rates going down, this is going to be another strong seller's market. Now, the major changes in the housing market means that buyers need to be prepared for multiple offer situations where houses go way over asking price with less and less likelihood of being able to do a home inspection. It's about to be cutthroat all over again. Are you curious as to why home prices didn't go down even after taking some of the hardest hits the economy could throw on it? The answer is in this video. It examines if housing prices going up are due to appreciation or inflation. All my contact information is in the description below, or you can reach out to me at youtuberealestateagent.com with any questions. Until next time.